I have a former student, Johnny Wu, a great guy. Let's suppose he has a fabulous idea, a business idea, but he needs some muscle. But somebody that's willing to work cheap, somebody that's willing to work for peanuts, and he thinks, ah, an elephant, awesome, they'll work for peanuts. So there's Johnny, he's climbed aboard this elephant. Uh, this elephant, Johnny Wu, of course, he's trying to woo him into working for him. And thankfully, Horton hears the woo, and the rest is history. Now, over the course of time, here's what we got. Hours worked. Uh, one day, Horton worked 10 hours and he earned 38 peanuts. Another day, 12 hours, 51 peanuts. You get the idea. X and Y. Hey, let's go to a coordinate axis system and let's plot those points and let's find a regression line, least squares regression line, line of best fit, and look, there it is. So that's the line that goes to there trying to predict the y. Now, it's going to be important for us to interpret the slope. This prediction line is in this form right here. That's the slope, 3.95. So as x goes up by one hour, the number of peanuts earned goes up by 3.95. So Horton's earning about 3.95, or roughly four peanuts per hour, working for peanuts. Now what we can do is plug these x values into that prediction line and get what the predicted y's would be. So on the one day when Horton worked for 10 hours and earned 38 peanuts, our regression line would have predicted that he would have made 40 peanuts. On this day, working 12 hours, we predicted this, he actually made that. So the prediction line is doing a pretty good job of predicting what's going to happen. There's just a little bit of error. <clears throat> now there's two ways to estimate how much we trust our least squares regression line to predict a y value. One of the ways is an r value. If r is zero, it means the points are all over the place. They're not going upward, they're not going downward. And the line of best fit would just be to find the average of all the y's, the average peanuts earned on any shift. And we'd say, that's it, that's our prediction line. There's no slope, and the r value is zero. Now, if the points instead are holding really close to a positively sloped straight line, then the r value is going to be really close to, point, or to 1.0. Uh, if there's a negative slope uh, to the line, to the relationship, then the R value is going to be negative. And the further R gets away from 1, the more scatter there is, the less efficient that the prediction line is. So that's an R value of negative 0.22. This one's a little bit tighter. That's an R value of negative 0.71. But beware, you can have an R value that's like really close to negative 1, but if you look at the graph, you can see that it's not really a linear relationship. The data is curved. So just because the R value is close to negative 1 or close to positive 1, you need one more way to see if the data fits well, and that's just take a visual of it. Look at a scatter plot, later we'll look at residual plots. Hey, that data looks linear and the line looks great, we're feeling good. The R value is important, it just helps us to get a little bit more information. Now, in addition, we want to describe the relationship or the association between our x and y variable in a scatter plot three ways, just like a single distribution is shape, center, and spread. Now, this is bivariate data. The association between the x and the y variable will be described by strength, direction, and form. Strength, right here, this is a strong linear relationship, and its direction is positive. So this is a strong, positive, linear relationship. Strength, direction, and form. It's linear. Uh, this one, this is weak, uh, weak relationship. The direction is it's going in a negative slope, but the form is still, eh, it's kind of linear. So that's weak, negative, linear uh, association. More on that later. So the correlation coefficient is somewhere between negative 1 and 1. If they're in a perfectly straight line positive, R is positive 1. If it was a perfectly straight line with a negative slope, smallest R value you could get is negative 1. So R, the correlation of coef the correlation of coefficients important, but R squared is even more important for a few reasons. R squared is called the coefficient of determination. It's the percent of variance in Y that's explained by the linear relationship to X. Years ago when I was in another school, we had 8th grade teachers giving two different tests for an entire period at, at uh, a week apart to their 8th graders at the end of the year to help us predict where they should go the following year. Should they go to regular algebra and a lower algebra and where should they go? So we gave these two tests and we said, okay, 
Here is their test score on test A in their eighth grade year. Then after they finish the ninth grade year in algebra, this is the grade or the percent they earn, 90%, 70%. We got this scatter plot. We did a linear regression line, and we get an R squared of 0.17. That means that 17% of the ninth graders' percentage earned in Algebra 1 was predicted or explained by the test score they got the year before. Likewise, the second test, oh, this should say test B, uh, gave us a 0.19 R squared. That meant this test was a little bit better in explaining what a student's algebra grade was. 19% of the algebra grade was explained by what they got on their test score the year before, and this, like I said, should be test B. Well, then what I did was I ran a little bit more sophisticated analysis on it and found that most of this percent was the same. It shared most of that percent there. So our conclusion was there's no reason for 8th grade teachers to give both exams and spend two days doing it. One of the exams would be better. This one looks a little bit better, so that's what we did. We stopped giving both exams and just gave this one. Now think this through and how powerful our squared is. Only 19%, that's less than one-fifth, of how a student did in algebra was explained by what their test score was the year before. What are some of the other important factors? Well, it might be their work ethic. It might be their parent involvement. It might be their math aptitude. It might be how many Twinkies they've consumed since kindergarten, because everybody knows Twinkies are brain food. All right, after all, they and cockroaches, right? Anyways, so, uh, but that's the R squared. It's the percent of variance in Y explained by X. Okay, now, once R squared is calculated, all you have to do to find R is take the square root of it. The radical of R squared gives you R. But, how is R squared calculated? I'm glad you asked. So let's take a look. Well, if we work a little further here, let's talk about the error. We know that this regression line, look at me using gold ink, right? The regression line is doing a pretty good job of predicting how many peanuts Horton will earn based on how many hours worked on a shift. But because these points are not exactly on the regression line, there's a little bit of error with most all of our predictions. Well, how much error? Well, you find the error amount by taking the actual Y, like when he worked 10 hours, that was exactly how many peanuts he earned. Subtract from that what we would have predicted on the prediction line at 10 hours, we would have predicted this amount, which was 40 peanuts, so we're off a little bit. So we have to do 38 minus 40 and get an error value of negative two. We were, in our prediction, two peanuts shy of a full load, okay, um, of our prediction. So, here's the deal. What we do now is look at every one of these, and we plot those error amounts in red. So, for example, on the shift when Horton worked 12 hours, he actually earned 51 peanuts. Our regression line would have predicted 47.9 peanuts, so he was an overachiever that day. He actually earned, his observed Y was 3.1 peanuts above what we predicted via our prediction equation, our least squares regression line. So we, um, we find all these error amounts, and there's not much. There's just a little bit of error. Our predictions are pretty good, but a little bit of error. Now, here's what we want to do. We want to compare our least squares regression line <clears throat> to that line of y bar equals 55.8, that average y bar. Why? Well, because remember, if this was our average, like he makes 55.8 peanuts per shift, and no matter how many hours he worked, that was just a smattering, a real scatter of how many peanuts he earned based on that many hours, with no real strong relationship. In that case, the r value is zero, there's no slope. Uh, to the regression line. There's just no correlation. There's no association. However, that's not what we have. What we have is not that scenario. We have this one, where the points are very much in a straight line. So that line does a lousy job of predicting, based on how many hours were worked, how many peanuts he'd get. This regression line does a much better job of predicting. So basically, what we're doing with the R squared, it's like we're having a contest, and we're keeping score. R squared is keeping the score of the competition for which does a more accurate job of predicting how many peanuts Horton will earn. 
Is it this lousy Y bar, this average of all the Ys, any shift is 55.8 peanuts per hour? Or is it this wonderful looking prediction line, least scores regression line, that says based on how many hours you work, we'll do a pretty good job predicting how many peanuts he's going to earn. Well, I think you can see the regression line's a lot better, but how much better? That's what R squared does. So we have the plot with just the average Y, the plot with just the uh, prediction line. Now what we have to do first is find the difference due to regression. In other words, uh, when Horton worked 10 hours, how far away was the prediction from the average of 55.8? When he worked 18 hours, how far was the prediction away from the average number of peanuts earned per shift of 55.8? So what we do is let's make another column. This regression difference is our predicted y minus the average of the y's. The average of the y's is 55.8, right? So our predicted y was 40 uh, when we were down here at 10 hours worked. Well, how far away was that from the average of all the days peanuts earned? Well, 40 minus 55.8 is negative 15.8. So we would say this difference due to regression is negative 15.8. The difference in the next one, this, act, this predicted y minus the average of all the y's peanuts earned was negative 7.9. So that difference due to regression is a negative amount. These guys are positive amounts. So we just want to see how far away from the average y line is our prediction line for the five different shifts that Horton actually worked. Okay, now, uh, what we do then is compare the, uh, we throw in the error amount. We want to see, well, okay, in actuality, um, how much of where these points are away from the average Y line is being explained or predicted by the regression line. Well, you can see this blue point was a fair distance away from the average Y line. Um, our prediction line came very close to predicting where it was only off by a little error amount. So nearly 100% of where the points are compared to the average purple Y line is explained by this regression line. So the formula we use to actually get the percentage is this. We're going to square all the error amounts because some are negative, some are positive. We're going to square these because some are negative, some are positive. So we'll call this the sum of squares of error and the sum of squares of regression. Now we're also going to stipulate that we have a total sum of squares, which is just to add those two together. So this is how R squared is calculated. Of the total sum of squares, what proportion of that is the sum of squares of regression? What proportion of how far basically a point is away from the average Y line is explained by that regression line or is accounted for by that regression line? Another way to get the R squared is this. We add the sum of squares error plus sum of squares regression to get the total sum of squares, so we have that alternatively. Well, here's the deal then. We take all of these sum of squares, or I'm sorry, we take all these error terms, we square them, negative 2 squared is 4, 3.1 squared is 9.61. We add up this, the squares of error to get the sum of the squares of error, that's 24.7, because we have just very little error about that regression line. But now, what's the sum of squares of the regression? Well, we have, we were negative 15.8 away with the regression line from the average Y line, so we square all these guys. We add them all up, and that is our sum of squares of regression. You can see that's a lot more significant than the itty bit little error amount. So we go to this formula right here. We take, uh, we follow these formulas, and so we plug the numbers in. We take the sum of squares of regression divided by the total sum of the squares, which is the sum of the error sum plus the re regression square sum. What we get is an R squared of 0.9618. Almost 100% of where those points are is explained by that regression line. If the points were exactly on the regression line, we would have 100%. Uh, so, the R squared is the coefficient of determination. R squared is 0.9618. So, what we can say is that 96% of the variance in peanuts earned is explained by the linear relationship to the hours that Horton worked. 
Uh, so again, it's this. Now, if the points were in a perfectly straight line, what I was starting to mention before, then you can see that there would be no sum of squares due to error. There would be no error amounts. So that would be zero. And so you'd just be left with the sum of the squares regression divided by the sum of the squares regression, which would be the total. That equals one. And that is why the biggest R squared you can get is one, because 100% of where the points are in relation to that average Y line would be explained perfectly with our prediction line. The points would be right on there, no error, 100% right on. Now the R value is the square or the radical of, of the one, so you could get plus or minus one if the points were in a perfectly positive straight line, they'd be plus one. If the points were all in a perfectly negative straight line, then the R value would be negative one, and that's how the two things relate. So, to wrap this up, this is our prediction line. This is our least squares regression line, uh, slope, y-intercept, and this is called the predicted y, the y-hat. In addition, we describe the association between x and y with strength, direction, and form. In this case, the points are close to the line. It's a high, uh, it's actually a, a negative r value that's really close to negative one. So we have strong, negative, linear association between x and y. And then we know that the correlation coefficient is between negative one and one. We should verify that, uh, that there's a linear relationship visually. We'll look at scatter plots or we'll look at residual plots in, a, in, a, in the near future and look out because you could get a high R value, but the data would actually be curved. So an R correlation coefficient is a linear correlation coefficient. It is not appropriate for saying that some curved relationship, a form that's not linear, would be appropriately predicted by a straight line, because it's not a straight line relationship. And then the R squared, it's the coefficient of determination. It's the percent of variance in Y explained by the linear relationship to X, but you gotta be careful. It's only a mathematical relationship of how close they hold to each other. It doesn't necessarily mean that X is causing Y. And I'll leave you with this, there's a very uh, famous thing from, uh, I, I believe, uh, Colonial Salem or something back, uh, back in the day, uh, Massachusetts, somewhere back there. And what they did was, over the course of time, they said, hey, based on uh, how many pastors there are in that colony, that did a good job of predicting how many barrels of rum there was. Oh, and look at that, we got an R squared of 98. So 98% of the barrels of rum sold are explained by how many pastors there are in the area. That means when you go to church, they'll drive you to drink, right? No, it's just a coincidence. This is not the explanatory vari variable for that response variable. There's a lurking variable, and it would be population. As time is going on, not only are, and the population is growing, not only are there more pastors in the colony, but they're also consuming more barrels of rum. So be careful. Don't always be quick to say, well, hey, this R squared is definitely that this X is causing, like in this case, 98% of that Y. you got to be careful. But that's a, a very good overview and uh, description of what we're going to do with linear regression and how we calculate and understand R squared and R. Good luck.